Good evening, this is Matt Metter, and I'll be bringing to you tonight our second uh, project for IDT 7074. And the title of this project is Context, Challenge, Activity, and Feedback as a Learning Theory, otherwise known as CCAF. This particular uh, theory that uh, I've formed is essentially a learning design model from alleninteractions.com, and we're going to look at this because of some some correlations that occur from other learning theories and theorists that uh, that basically align um, in e-learning and and why we're, we're we're pushing for this. As far as the table of contents are concerned, uh, just to let everybody know that this was actually designed in Captivate 2017. Uh, so I swapped over from Captivate 9 and, and started to play around with this. So, uh, you know, th this is a learning experience for me with some of the, maybe some of the sizes of things like that. But um, I would encourage those who are interested in e-learning authoring tools to, to, to get a little more proficient with this, as I intend to do. So as far as the table of contents are concerned, what I'm going to discuss tonight is context, challenge, activity, and feedback as basically an overview. Uh, we're going to compare learning theories, forming a learning, or uh, forming a theory, rather, uh, from a model to a theory. And then there's going to be a quick quiz. Oh yeah, there's a quick quiz in there tonight. And then I'm going to provide some references. The objectives for tonight are to explain a learning theory, compare learning theories with CCAF, identify points of CCAF theory, and describe CCAF as a process. So the four major principles of CCAF is in fact context, challenge, activity, and feedback. Context is, is the first element in, as far as learning anyway. Uh, this is encounters, conversations, whatever, what have you, and this is it. Initially, uh, with context, the, the, the exposure is what sets the tone for the learning environment. And of course, there's a couple of tips that are here, and you want to add visual appeal, you want to build a relevant setting, you want to tell a story, and create suspense. Having these four tips in mind, they basically form the foundation of interactions that are compelling, satisfying, and effective. The next principle is going to be challenge. Challenge, uh, as far as e-learning is concerned, is going to generate some sort of inspiration for the learner. It's non-trivial, and it creates a sense of urgency. And you want to focus on these four areas. The first being consequence, the second being difficulty, the third being risk, and the fourth outcome. And then, of course, these areas are the guiding points in forming the challenge principle. The next principle is, in fact, activity. And activity is an interaction. It's basically defined by the physical responses and actions that the learner is required to perform to achieve success. Oftentimes, reading and listening are the most relied on activities. In e-learning, uh, it has difficulty monitoring these types of activities. For, for the most part, people just simply skim over it and press on and uh, skip the, the content in many cases. So there's some tips that we've provided here, and those tips are you want to practice, of course, practice makes perfect. You want to use real-world applications that call for a response from the learner through interactivity. The second, you want to compare e-learning approaches, which evaluate knowledge content and visually stimulating activity that promote interactivity and relevance. You want to drag and drop activity. Through visual appeal, drag and drop activity can be enhanced by creating real world situations and having learners drag and drop responses in an open scenario. And then of course the fourth tip here is creating effort around responses. This promotes 
critical thinking. It generates a multitude of responses for the learner and delays judgment, giving the learner an opportunity to think about the answers. And finally, we have feedback. Feedback is the wide range of responses given back to the learner as a result of user action. A couple of tips here. You want It identifies judgment versus feedback, serves as a tool for content presentation. You want to use intrinsic feedback, such as good job. It delays judgment, presents consequences, and then, of course, feedback also brings it all together. We're going to do a quick self-check here. What are the principles of CCAF? Mind you, we just went over the, the four principles, and so I'm going to help you along here. For those of you who chose answer A, well, it's definitely answer B. Now, in comparison with uh, a couple of other theorists that are involved with the adult learning or learning theory in general, I decided to use Gagne. Gagne's Nine Steps to Instruction, uh, more um, more so, and, and the reason why I chose that is because it's so, it, 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 it signifies, the again, the nine steps as far as step one, gaining attention, moving to orient the learner, uh, stimulating recall of prior knowledge, presenting con content material, provide the learner guidance, and then moving into elicit performance or practice, and then provide informative feedback. You assess if learn lesson objectives have been learned, and then of course enhance retention and transfer. Transfer. Every one of these steps correlate to CCAF. CCAF and its significance is because it applies to e-learning. With Gagne's, it, it was generally applied to pedagogy, and so. You take these, you look at CCAF, and every one of these points to some correlation in context, challenge, activity, and feedback. Now, on this uh, slide here, you've got, again, the, the Robert Gagne's Nine Steps to Instruction, Malcolm Knowles and Andragogy, and then, of course, Allen uh, Interactions CCAF. Again, you've got the nine steps for instruction under Gagne. Here, we've got Malcolm Knowles and Andragogy, which I'm going to go over. And With Andragogy, we're looking at adult learning and adult learning theory. Uh, the first principle here would be a need to know. The second, of course, the learner self-concept. Uh, Self-efficacy is a big, big deal uh, in this as well. Yeah, third being the role of the learner's experience. The fourth, readiness to learn, orientation to learning, and of course, motivation. Notice how all six of these can see some similarity or correlation within Robert Gagne's nine steps. And then, of course, we can compare all three learning theories here and determine the links between the three. And, of course, this slide right here is a free discussion amongst the peers. Ethan Edwards is Chief Instructional Strategist at Allen Interactions. Here he provides some words of wisdom. Hi, I'm here at ACD in Chicago with Ethan from uh, Allen Interactions. Ethan, what, what one top tip would you give e-learning designers? Make sure that you create a context that has meaning and significance to the learners, and then, then you can get performance out of that. And without a context, it's very hard to get anything out of it. Great. Thanks, Ethan. And so there goes some words from Ethan. Context, again, uh, Ethan comments on context, that very first principle. So, you know, you got words of a, 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 a very, very clever individual there. Uh, Ethan Edwards uh, is, again, chief learning uh, strategist for Allen Interactions. He, in addition to working for Allen Interactions, he also is part of the American uh, Society for Talent and Development. Um, 
in reference to moving so uh, designing e-learning uh, courseware content in charge of the the certification process that runs through that that uh, entity and of course here we have a design principle infograph and one of the three M's that I referred to in the SAM model, memorable, meaningful, and motivational, again, all apply to even the CCAF model. Okay, And these are, again, engaging learning experiences. If you'd like some more information on that, uh, I suggest you check out www.alleninteractions.com. All right, here we go with the quick quiz. CCAF is... Uh, known as, and forgive the uh, typo there, that's right, context, challenge, activity, and feedback. Which learning theories does CCAF align with most frequently? Well, we discussed Robert Gagne, and we'd also discuss Malcolm Knowles. What is one variable that is key in the formation of CCAF? Again, we're going to refer back to our guy, Ethan Edwards. He mentioned context. CCF is a learning theory inside of, that's right, we just said it was inside the SAM model, and that's an instructional design model. CCAF can be described as a learning theory. All right, and uh, you scored 100% accuracy. Good job. All right, so as far as some resources are concerned, if you want to check out some web references, uh, I would encourage you, again, to check out www.alleninteractions.com. This is my go-to site for about everything when, it re when I refer to the success of approximation model uh, and the CCAF uh, learning theory. Um, I also encourage you to look up... Um, Ethan Edwards, uh, he's got a, a white paper through Allen Interactions. That is a key source uh, as far as a text reference that I use for this particular paper. Uh, and then, of course, there's some additional sites here, www.instructionaldesign.com, instructionaldesigncentral.net, elearningguild.com. And then, of course, there's a variety of sites. So I hope you all got a little something out of uh, <coughs> this presentation for the evening. I know it was pretty rapid. Um, but again, I'm, I'm hoping that you all got a little something, and I look forward to, uh, to bringing this to the class at a later date. Have a good night.